Hey guys, Alan here with Telekinesis Entertainment. Today's quick tip is actually a bit of a workaround for a bug that got introduced in 10.0.6. Uh, I've actually been in contact with the Final Cut Pro 10 team at Apple, and uh, for those of you who think they don't care about professionals, you're dumb, because they really do. They're putting a lot of effort in to make sure it works in professional environments. Not just one-man band stuff like I do, but you know, all over the place, big, big workflows. Anyway, in 10.0.6, they rethought the way Final Cut 10 deals with multi-track audio. They added a thing that they call audio component editing, which you know, allows you to work in the way that a lot of editors are used to with tracks, but it also preserves all of the stuff that we love about the magnetic timeline. So you can see here, we have a clip in here and you can move it back and forth and it acts the same way it used to. You can also double click the audio track and it'll pop down and then you can you know, do your J and L cuts, just like you used to be able to before. But what they added is a new way to interact with audio, so you can do the quick key is Control Option S instead of just Control S to pop down the audio. And then you see you have separate tracks, so you can select a region, turn it off, or you know, select a region and turn it down, or you can turn off this clip entirely because there's no audio in it, etc. So it's really great. Unfortunately, when they rewrote that chunk of code, it caused some issues with how Final Cut 10 deals with importing and synchronizing multi-track audio Yoda. Multiple file multi-track audio. So the kind of stuff you would get from a sound device is 744 or 788. Basically anything you would get that comes from something bigger than say a Zoom or our little Tascam DR100. <clears throat> Apple even have a best practices posted on their support website. You can go to that link right there, and it'll tell you how to create synchronized audio from multiple audio files instead of just synchronizing, you know, one stereo file or even a dual mono single file from like a Zoom recorder. But there's something else that's an even bigger problem. When you synchronize audio, say this clip right here, what should pop up in the inspector is the storyline, which would be like a dual mono or a stereo. This is the camera audio and the connected, which should show four mono tracks, but instead it only shows one if you just connect everything at once. If you do it the way they recommend, it still ends up looking like this, so there's a workaround that you gotta do. <clears throat> this is kind of ridiculous and a bit annoying. Now the guys on the Final Cut 10 support team have told me that they're working on this, the engineers are gonna get a fix done relatively soon, so hopefully this video will be out of date in a couple of weeks. But until then, here's what you have to do. Here are our four audio files. You can see it's all recording the same stuff. This one's actually empty because we didn't have a mic on this track for this shot. And then here's a boom mic. And then these are two lavalier mics. So what you do is you select all of them, synchronize clips, and you'll end up with a synchronized clip. Now, what you do from here is right click, open in timeline. I've added this to Shift G. Uh, you should create a keyboard shortcut for this because you're going to be doing it a lot and you can't double click on a clip anymore to jump straight into it. You have to right click and hit open in timeline. So it's much easier to just have a keyboard shortcut. Now once you're here, you have to select the main storyline audio track by itself and then go to clip, break apart clip items or command shift G. Now once you do that, you see it shows that it's an audio track now, and then you go and you select the other ones. You have to select the main storyline audio by itself, or it won't work. And then you can do all the other ones at the same time. So then we do the same thing, clip, break apart clip items, command shift G. Now they're all showing as audio. Then we can jump back. So what we do is select your video, select your now synchronized audio clip, command option G, Synchronize that clip. So now we have that synchronized, and you can see we have Storyline Audio, which is a stereo track. Let's set that to dual mono. And four mono connected clips, which you can then turn on and off. You can scrub through independently. And the great thing is when we add this, let's add this clip to the end of our timeline. If you hit Control Option S, it brings down all six audio tracks. You can go ahead and just disable those ones because we're not going to use them. You can do whatever you want. 
and it works the way it's supposed to. Now if you do it the way that you should be able to do it, just press Command Option G with the video and all of the audio selected, and it will synchronize properly. So if we press Shift G and jump in, you can see all of the audio is synced properly. However, what it says is the storyline clip is one mono track, which is the recorder, and then the connected is the stereo that's coming from the camera. So it's really screwed up and weird. Fortunately, this workaround, when you get to this, works great, and then you can edit exactly the way you would like to, and it's all wonderful. There's just the hassle of setting up the clips properly. So until Apple gets that fixed, this is the workaround, lets you work exactly the way you would expect to, and the new audio component editing, which is basically tracked sound editing, works great. It's very easy to use. Uh, let's just hope they get everything else fixed quickly. And until then, stay classy.